So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, type in that matrix <laughs> that we had before. So A is, uh, I'm just going to put in values, A, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, um, so there's my A matrix. Okay, now X is going to be my vector. Okay, and let's say that's, um, like that X is uh, 1, 2. Now actually, I, I need to make that a column vector instead. So I, I do that by... Um, you know, a, a, a vector that's oriented in the column position versus a row position. You just add the semicolon to get a new line there, a new row. Okay, so now if I do A times X, okay, that's my answer. Okay, so Y equals A times X. Okay, um, and then you'll see the variables off in the right-hand pane. Okay, so you can come over here and explore these uh, you know these variables you can open it up and then it shows you uh, you know what the variable is okay so you, you can either click it uh, there or you can uh, come back to your <coughs> command prompt and I think I need to resize this thing I'm trying there we go okay um, or you can just type your variable and it will show you what it equals okay so uh, this is this is MATLAB, okay? Now you can also put these into a script file, okay? So you can just create a new uh, file if you if you'd like, or you can uh, you know right click and do a new model or script. Uh, so we're going to do a new script here. Um, you can also just type at the command prompt, edit uh, new.m, okay? And oh, that is a function that's already exists. I don't want that. I want to. Uh, Xam1.m. Okay, I'll just. Uh, do you want to create it? Yes. Okay, and then I can put my commands in here, just like I type them in at the command prompt. Okay. Um, okay, and the semicolon just means at the end. It means don't display it after you've run that command. Okay, so you either display it or don't display it. And then I can uh, run it right here okay and that showed uh, the results a and X okay of the script that I just ran okay so I'm going to go back to my uh, example here okay of just running MATLAB okay now now um, okay any questions about this first part just opening up MATLAB running some commands in MATLAB you guys have any questions about that okay pretty straightforward on on using MATLAB let me um, Okay, so all right, so now let's define a transfer function. Okay, so I'm going to do s equals um, a Laplace variable s. Okay, so there's my new transfer function s. Okay, and I would just want to do uh, maybe a, a, a simple uh, a transfer function that's going to be two divided by five times s plus one. Okay, so there's my transfer function G. Okay, now I want to do a step response to that transfer function. I'm just going to do step on G and that will bring up a plot uh, hopefully fairly shortly. This is running a little bit slow right now. I think it's because it's recording the desktop as well. It's a little bit slow. Okay, so there's my step and you guys would expect a gain of two. And uh, so, so so let me um, let me talk about this system now that we just derived. Okay, so now we have it in state space form A B C D matrices. That's what you need for a state space model. You just need those matrices and they're constants. Okay, now we want to be able to simulate those. So what I'm going to do is open up a script that I generated that has those A B C D matrices in it, and um, and I'll post these to the uh, the course website as well so you guys can play around with these examples. Okay, just for the our CSTR. Um, example that we used uh, today. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Where is my? Just a quick question. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the command was step g. So once you've defined what g is. Right? Yeah. So once you've defined what g is, and if you guys have any questions about different commands, you can always go back into MATLAB and just type help step, and then it will show you um, a help on how to use that. So that was, I assume, just a unit 
step? Just a yeah, unit step on the input to get the output. Yeah, so if you just did, um, so if I just did step of 3 times G, okay. then I could do a step of 3 instead. Okay? Okay, so let me go back to that example, and uh, you know, this is the, uh, the linearized example. I made an M function. Okay, so this is exactly what you saw today with the, uh, the different variables uh, from your worksheet. Okay, and then I just did the uh, state space model. I had my A, uh, just like we had, uh, you know, from the species balance. I just plugged in my A, uh, A11, A12, A21, and A22. Okay, so the energy balance is a little bit more complex. You can see more terms there. But those just work out to be constants, okay? And then uh, my B matrix, uh, it's just flow over V for a couple of these, and then you had uh, heat, overall heat transfer coefficient. Uh, for this one, and then C matrix was just an an identity matrix. Okay, one zero zero one for the uh, the the that matrix. Okay, and then D is just zeros. Um, okay, so so now I'm going to step uh, this, and we'll just look at the response. Uh, so just when you when this comes up, just do change folder. Okay, so change it to the folder. Uh, it has the concept of of which directory you're in. Okay, to access those files. Okay, so now I have my my step function. So this is what was my first input? You guys remember it was, it was uh, C A N. Okay. So if I stepped up C A N by a unit of one, a one uh, unit step, this would be my output of concentration. Okay. So I, I also have this right here. These this green line. Those are that's a discrete state space form. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. Um, so there's continuous. So the differentials and then the discrete state space form as well. So continuous or discrete, but at every step it exactly matches uh, for the discrete. Okay, so discrete, it's only computing <laughs> at certain points in the future versus continuous, it computes it all the way. Okay, uh, there's, there's trade-offs on, on each of those. So this is T initial. Okay, now there's no effect right here. Would you guys expect that from T initial? If I step T initial, there's no effect on concentration? Okay, now it would for the nonlinear model. Why doesn't it do for the linear model? Okay, so if you look at this equation, do you see T initial here anywhere? Okay, so no T initial. Um, okay, and then, uh, and then also for this one, this is temperature cooling. Okay, so only CA has an effect on that. Okay, so that's a, that's a linearized model. So I bet you guys you just have this burning question in your mind you know about does does this linear model does it approximate the nonlinear model well enough okay I know you guys probably couldn't sleep tonight if you hadn't had uh, didn't answer this question okay so um, you know just as I mentioned about MATLAB you can address very complex systems very easily you know we we took this and we uh, went down to this linearization step but what if you could just use that equation directly in all of your analysis? You didn't even have to linearize. You didn't have to put it into Laplace transforms. You didn't have to put it in state space forms. You could just deal with your equations directly. Okay, so that's MATLAB also allows you to do that. You don't have to do any linearization. You can just write your equations and you can simulate them. Okay, so let's let's compare the simulation of of uh, MATLAB to our linearized model and see how good of an approximation it is just in the neighboring region, okay? Um, so this one's just a little bit more complex. This one's just CSTR.M. And if I go to the CSTR nonlinear, um, so it's a, it's a little bit more code, okay? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this. Um, let's see if I'm connected to the internet for this. Let me just connect really quick so I can bring up a web viewer as well. I guess I should have plugged in the uh, the internet connection there. Oh. Okay, so it ran. 
I need to I need to validate mine. Do you guys do that? Or do you just you use the insecure machine. one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I need to do that. I, it just ran out. Okay. So I'm going to change folder on that guy, and then I'm going to run it, and now we'll see how well the nonlinear uh, uh, approximates, or the linear approximates the nonlinear. Okay. So this is an analysis that you guys might want to do at some point, just to say, you know, is this a good approximation? Okay, so there's my linear and there's my nonlinear. Okay, uh, the linear is in red and the two nonlinear ones are in blue and, and black. Okay, so pretty good, pretty good response there. Okay, um, so so I, I can simulate. I can also set up controllers in in linear or nonlinear um, form. So so I'm going to go ahead and re end this recording, but. Um, one other thought I had on the on the MATLAB is for those of you who are not comfortable with programming or things like that, I was thinking about having something, uh, you know, once or twice a week that could be kind of like a recitation section uh, where you guys could come and just have very hands-on uh, experience with MATLAB. Um, so I'll set that up as well. Don't do 1118. I'll send out a note on that as well for people that aren't here. Just do 1114 for next uh, class period.